chaos. I'd like to call on all the dads who are here, the fathers who are here, or the mothers who act like fathers. <laughs> Please stand, and we will recognize you, and we will greet you. Happy Father's Day. All the dads, let's give them a big, big round of applause. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you, you got to enjoy your day because the rest of the year is Mother's Day. <laughs> All right? So enjoy it today. You know, don't wash dishes. Just be a king. All right. Uh, so um, my name is uh, Father Glenn Lopez. I'm the older brother of Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> ah, that's, that's true. I'm not kidding. I'm not lying because I have a sister whose name is Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> And uh, she's so proud, and she says, I'm the original J-Lo. Yeah, so, but she's married now. She can't take that Lopez anymore. She's changed her last name, so. But anyway, uh, I actually have two names, Julius Glenn. Glenn is my second name, but I don't use Julius because it sounds like gladiator, right? Julius, like Bruce, and I don't have the muscles to prove it. So I just, you know, everybody uses Glenn, so it's easy, one, just one syllable, Glenn, no, not Julius, uh, Julius. Who, who uses Julius now? Is there any Julius here? See, nobody. Uh, is there any Glenn here? Ah, there's not. <laughs> See, so uh, I'm, I'm Julius, uh, I'm Father Glenn Lopez, and uh, I was born and raised in the Philippines. I was born, raised, and ordained there in the Philippines. I came to the United States in 2005, the year this parish was born. So I came here about 14 years ago, and I first ministered as a, a hospital chaplain. I was a hospital chaplain for 12 years, and it's not easy, but it's a very important ministry to care for the sick, the dying, and their grieving family. So, you know, it's a very, very important, but I got tired after 12 years. I said, Lord, please give me something, you know, because my parishioners are sick people. Every day I meet them, I meet with them, I talk to them, I listen to them, and sometimes I feel so helpless. There's nothing you can do. Terminally ill people and their grieving family. So I prayed and prayed for two years, Lord, please lead me. And then he brought me to the Diocese of Orlando. So I've been here two and a half years. I came uh, as, a, oh, I was in California as a hospital chaplain in L.A., of all places. So when I got here, it's like, oh, no traffic. Ah, I love it. So good. You know, in L.A., I live about 10 miles away from my work, and it takes me 45 minutes, 10 miles, and I take four freeways to get to work to the hospital. So, you know, so the first time I arrived in Lakeland, I was in Lakeland, St. Joseph, and I said, oh, I'm all alone here. The traffic is light in front of me. It's like, oh, this is life. This is good. So I, I feel so blessed. And of course, the Diocese of Orlando, I've been here. The bishop is so gracious, and the, my brother priests, they're so welcoming and so warm. And, you know, and just like you did yesterday, the warm welcome I received, and today, and, you know, I feel so home at home and it feels so welcome and I feel like very very much special today and uh, I hope every day so uh, so I've been a priest for a long time so you can see I've lost some of my hair and some of the young men here please you know consider becoming a priest we need reinforcements <laughs> we're, we're getting old and few so you know father David myself and Every year, the Diocese of Orlando, we have about five priests retiring, and we only have one or two ordinations each year, so it's not sustainable. So we really have to pray for more vocations to the priesthood. So I would encourage you and your family, your friends, you know, pray for our, our young men uh, and even women because, you know, we also need people uh, to be ministers as religious uh, men and women, so to pray to, to support the church because, you know, the priesthood is very special. It is a gift from God. It is a gift from Christ. And so we need priests. And, and so I'm just happy to be here to be able to minister with you. So I've been a priest for 30 years. I was ordained in December 9 of 1989. So by December 9, I'll be 30 years a priest. So that's, I feel like I'm really old. <laughs> uh, 
So, and I have to apologize to you because I could not get here sooner than I wanted because my appointment was uh, June 1st, but I didn't know that I would be transferred, so I planned my vacation. I went to the Philippines to be with my family because we had a grand reunion. I don't have a big family. I have a huge family. Oh, in that reunion last week, I, w I just came in. I just flew in last Friday, so my head is still kind of spinning because the Philippines is halfway around the world. It's 12 hours. We're, they're all they're 12 hours advance. So wake me up if I fall asleep right now because I'm still kind of. But anyway, so I went to the Philippines and had um, you know reunion with with my family. It's a big family. I met 52 of my first cousins. Only 52. Only there could be more, but not everybody could make it. So really, and uh, so I. I I'm used to people, I love people, I just want to be with people, so that's who I am. Uh, <clears throat> and so looking back at my life as a priest for the last 30 years, kind of, I asked myself, Lord, why, why did you call me to become a priest? And for those of us who are old enough to understand and realize, make realizations in life that life really is a mystery, right? Life is a mystery. Why am I here? Why am I a dad? Why am I a mom, and why am I doing these things, and, and what, is, what is the purpose and meaning of my life? And we constantly ask that question, even we priests, we constantly ask that question, even now that I know that I'll be priest and I'll die a priest, but I still ask the question, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is there still for me to do? And how can you, and how can I be a, a good a good disciple of yours and make a difference in the lives of people. We ask that question constantly. Even our young people, they ask, what am I going to be when I graduate from high school? What's life for me? What is it for me? What is there for me? A lot of times we can only answer the what of life, but the why of life is so hard to answer. Life is really a mystery. And much more so, our lives as Christians, our lives as Christians is really filled with so many mysteries. Our feast of today, our solemnity today, the most blessed trinity, is probably central to the life of every Christian, believing in a God that's only one, but reveals himself in three distinct beings, three distinct persons. The Trinity. And I believe, you know, centuries, since the beginning of Christianity, people have been struggling to really understand the meaning and the dynamics of this relationship within the blessed Trinity. There's only one God in three divine persons. Perfect unity. And you know what? When we read the Gospels, we study the Gospels, we hear the Gospels, we hear Jesus telling us about a glimpse of the life within the Blessed Trinity, the inner self-communication between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it confuses us because sometimes Jesus says, the Father does this, and the Father says this, and I am the Son. Yeah, it feels like Jesus is talking about two different beings, two different gods. But then at other times, he will also say, the Father and I are one, meaning just one. There's no, there's no two God's there. It's only one. The Father and I are one. And I will give you the Spirit who will lead you to all truth, the gospel that we have just heard. So the dynamics of this relationship, the perfect unity, the holy triune God is so hard to understand. It's so hard to fathom. But our being as humans, we always love to know things, you know. I want to know what is it? And how can I solve this mystery? That's human nature. Knowledge. I want to have knowledge. But I think God is calling us to have wisdom. More than knowledge, to have wisdom. To use our knowledge to see things and to be enlightened by things as we reflect on the meaning of God in our lives. And I believe God is a mystery not to be solved but a mystery to be lived. We have to live the life of the Trinity in our lives. And how do we do that? We know that the Father is the creator God. 
The Son is the Redeemer God, and the Spirit is the Sanctifier God. How can we live the Trinity in our lives? Because we're, we're baptized into Christ. And where Christ is, there is the Father and there's the Holy Spirit, the one in three divine persons in each one of us. When we receive the beautiful sacrament of Christian initiation, God is within us. We are become the temple of God, and His Spirit dwells in us. And where the Spirit is, there is the Father and the Son. And so, how can we live the Trinity in our lives? We are walking Trinities ourselves, too, because we are temples of God, the Spirit of God, the Father, the Son. They're all here with us. We walk through this life. We journey through this life expressing this mystery and the presence of the Trinity in our lives. We live the Father's life as the Creator by creating an atmosphere of love, of unity, of respect amongst each other. Within your family, first, of course, your own community, your place of work, your school, expressing and creating that atmosphere because we can create things. We are genius. We are people. We, God has given us the capacity to create things. And the challenge for us now as Christians, as followers of Christ, is that we have to create certain atmosphere in our community, in our families, in our homes, in our schools, our places of work, where God can be revealed through us. And as the Redeemer, we have to live the life of Jesus by showing compassion to people. Be compassionate. Be respectful. Be understanding. And above all, be forgiving. Be forgiving. Jesus has forgiven us without counting the cost. He died for us. And he didn't say, okay, I'll die for you now, but then I'll get back to you, you know, when I... No, he said, I die for all of you for both the good and the bad. And he teaches us to love one another. He said, love your enemies. That's the most difficult part of being a Christian, to love your enemies. Do you have enemies right now? Can you really say that, I love my enemy? <laughs> That's hard, right? That's so hard. And people find it so difficult to forgive and even to forget. People sometimes spend years and years of their lives, even towards the end of their life, still not having able to forgive someone, still hold the grudge, the heavy heart. But Jesus said, forgive, love your enemies, and pray for those who hate you. And for those who say that Christian living or Christian life is easy, you're wrong. Just with that, that's not going to be easy. To love your enemies, to pray for those who hate you, to those who hurt you. And then finally, the Spirit is the sanctifier. The Spirit sanctifies us by giving us gifts because the Spirit is the giver of good gifts. And I see this in your parish and many other parishes when people share their gifts with the community. We have Eucharistic ministers, we have lectors, we have choirs, we have cantors, we have altar servers, you know, we have a DJ over there, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and, you give yourself, your time, your talent, your treasure without counting the cost. These guys are not asking for a salary, are you? No. You're not asking anything in return because you want to, to serve. You want to share. And by doing that, you are sanctifying your community. These young boys and girls here, they sanctify us because they serve the Lord in the altar breaking bread with the priest and helping assist all of us to sanctify this community. They give life to us. They sanctify us. They share their gifts and many others besides. Many of you have been doing that for many, for a long time in your lives. And so my brothers, my sisters, the most blessed Trinity will continue to live in each one of us for as long as we create an atmosphere of love and communion and unity within our families, community, our homes, our schools, our place of work. If we can forgive one another, we live the spirit of Christ's redeeming love. And if we sanctify each other by sharing our gifts, we live the spirit and we are the church of the Holy Spirit. May the most holy triune God live in each one of us. Amen.